Hey everyone, what's going on? Jeff here from Films at Home and welcome back to the Films at Home podcast. In today's episode, we're going to be talking to two gentlemen from SVS Sound. We're going to talk to Nick and Larry over there at SVS. Now, SVS Sound is a premium home theater and audio speaker company. I consider them one of the better home theater speaker providers out there. My whole setup here at home is SVS Sound. I have their SVS Prime Tower speakers, Prime Bookshelves. I have the SVS Subwoofer. I have their Center Channel. And I have their Prime Elevation speakers. So my whole audio system for the home theater is SVS. But they're also doing really cool work when it comes to just like listening to music and home audio, uh, listening to vinyl records and setting up sort of an audio home studio, a listening room, you know, they're not just home theater and they've made some really cool advancements in wireless technology and just sound technology as a whole with their Atmos speakers, with their new subwoofer, um, sound path feet. That's a new invention that we're going to talk about on the podcast a little bit. Lots of things to talk about here when it comes to audio. We'll talk demo discs. We'll talk about why bass is so important, how to set up a home theater, all this good stuff. So Hope you guys enjoy this one. It's uh, more technical than maybe I usually get into, but luckily these guys also just love movies. So we talk plenty about movies and home theater and some of the, the best sounding movies, what they use for demos. It's a really interesting conversation that I think you guys will enjoy. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the interview here with SVS Sound with Nick and Larry. All right, everyone. So welcome to the interview here with the uh, the SVS Sound team. I've got Nick and Larry here from SVS. We're going to talk some some home theater audio and speakers and subwoofers and all that fun stuff and home theater audio. So thanks for joining me today, guys. Really appreciate you taking the time. Um, I've been an SVS user for, I think, six years now. It's maybe seven we go back to. I've had the prime setup um, and then added the elevations later on. So I'm a huge fan. Super excited to talk to you all about what's going on, what's new, um, you know, demo discs, all that fun stuff. So if you want to just introduce yourselves and give a little background on uh, who you are, what you do at SVS, that'd be awesome. Thank you, Jeff. And first of all, I love what you're doing here. I think you've been fighting the good fight for uh, a number of years, as you said, really trying to bring awareness to the importance of immersive audio and just how much it adds to the experience. So uh, I'm just really happy you're doing this podcast because I think it's, it's going to be a great, great thing for our industry, but also for uh, for film lovers, because, you know, I, I think there's a lot to be gained from getting a good audio system. But um, I don't want to blather on too much. I'm Nick. I'm the VP of marketing. Uh, if you've read reviews or seen uh, any of the uh, social posts that we make, I'm, I'm probably uh, had something to do with that. So um, I lead up the marketing team over there. And, uh, you know, again, we're just super excited to be here uh, representing SVS on, uh, on the podcast. And uh, I will kick it to my colleague, Larry. He's our national training manager. Larry, tell a little about yourself. Yeah. So as Nick said, I, I am Larry. Last name is Magoo, like the cartoon. That's how most people know me. But uh, my role is the national training manager for the brand. So I work with our retail partners across the globe to educate them on our products, to walk through uh, different setup scenarios. We even do some consultative type work as well with the salespeople out there. And I do a lot of the movie demos and curation of that stuff for our brand too. So I'm the movie geek of the company. Perfect. And, uh, do a little bit of everything. Yeah, no, we can tell. We can tell by the background <laughs> in the room. Um, I had a feeling you might have been the movie geek. I, I love the. Are those uh, are those vinyl or are they laser yeah, discs I up in the corner? Soundtracks on vinyl. Okay. So that's what's surrounding the room, and then pop figures and Nakatomi Tower. If I can point at it, and yep, uh, we even got Lucille from The Walking Dead up there too. So this Classic. is my geekery room. Yep. Hey, everyone deserves one of those. Um, so speaking of little geekery rooms, I'm sitting in mine right now too. Um, and I've got all my, my speakers here. So I, like I said, I've been using SVS We're we're going on six, seven years now. Love this stuff. And sort of the new thing that I've been eyeing from you guys is these, these wireless speakers, because, uh, going back to 2012, 2013, when I finally got a job and got some money and could afford this stuff, I was looking into, you know, what's a, what's a cheap way to build my first home theater and wireless came up. And at the time I was told, you know, don't, 
don't touch wireless. You're not going to get the quality. It drops. It's iffy. You know, technology wasn't there, whatever it was. So I'm really curious, like what you guys are doing with the the wireless tech for speakers and uh, sort of where that's where that's headed in the future. Like, is that going to be a viable option for, you know, home theater setups? Well, I, I think down the road there, there's a chance for viability with wireless surround sound. You know what, what we do is a powered bookshelf speaker for a two channel listening scenario, mm -hmm. but there are products out there that you can get that use a technology called WISA. And essentially they plug into a wall and that's how you get power to the speaker as opposed to an amplifier. And there'll be some sort of hub that each of the speakers connect to wirelessly. And that creates your surround field. But the, the biggest drawback to them is they're typically pretty small and underpowered. And there's just not a lot of solutions out there that are effective. Kind of like you talked about, there's, there's maybe a handful of brands that are really doing a lot with it right now. And it's kind of hard to find out there in the stores. But uh, I think eventually we'll get there to where it'll be a pretty cool technology where you can kind of put speakers everywhere. But what a lot of people don't think of, you do have to get power there too. So they'll never truly be wireless. Uh, but there, there's a technology that's it's, I guess the best way to put it would be it's brewing right now to where it could be out there. And the way we approach wireless is different in that we have a pair of powered bookshelf speakers that you put on your wireless home network. And so that is what our prime wireless speakers are. And that you can use for streaming music, doing Bluetooth, hooking up to your television, things like that, and putting them all over your house. And so that is our approach to wireless. We've got a couple of really cool products in that category, too. It is worth mentioning that DTS PlayFry, the uh, platform that Prime Wireless works with, does support like having wireless surrounds with a soundbar or mm -hmm. a pair of t uh, like your TV speakers. It will allow you to integrate, you know, a pair of like Prime Wireless speakers as the uh, the, the rear channels in a uh, in a system like that. But uh, currently, it's not supporting just having five speakers all around you yet. And I think that's where we really right. see some promise and and where the the magic will really happen when that that becomes more mainstream. Yeah, and I think I think that's where I see this being interesting is as a soundbar replacement for uh, you know, maybe living room setups. Um, you know, that's that's what I was looking at it for. You know, I'm using I've got my big setup in the movie room, but you know, I, I still watch stuff downstairs and I get this, you know, admittedly crappy soundbar that doesn't sound great. And I've been, you know, but the thing is my wife doesn't want wires running all over the room. So it's like you, you know we pick and choose our battles there. I'll take the sound bar over the TV speakers, but could something like a, a two channel, you know, bookshelf wireless system be great for a living room and still give you, you know, a, a, a better experience or at least on par with a sound bar. Um, and, and that's kind of what I, you know, where I was looking at it for. Cause a lot of people ask me, a lot of people are in apartments. They don't have dedicated movie rooms. They have, you know, living room setups and they're like, what sound bar do I buy? And I'm like, yeah, there's, there's a few out there that are okay, but it's like, do you want to spend a thousand dollars, you know, on a sound bar that is supposedly giving you an Atmos experience? It's probably not, you know, you'd be better off with a 2.1 system, which is what I tell a lot of people, just get a couple good speakers up front. Um, so that's where I really see like promise for this. I could definitely see people in the audience uh, using these as a sound bar substitute, which is really cool. Yeah, absolutely. So our, our current generation product has an optical connection on it so you can run a line off of your television. I have them sitting on my desk right here with a subwoofer as a really awesome computer system that's a 2.1, but you can absolutely hook them up to the television. And uh, we're going to have some advancements in that category as well, where we will have a true soundbar alternative with a pair of powered bookshelf speakers. And we've kind of talked about them. I just don't know how far Nick is wanting us to, go <laughs> to tease a product that's not out yet got hdmi so i mean that's an important one uh and it'll be available this summer we you know i think we'll we'll tease that a little bit more later on jeff but i mean the other important factor with uh going two channels you have an upgrade path you know a lot of times with the sound bar it's like you sort of have this thing but it can't integrate into a wider home theater system so you start with a pair of right. you know bookshelf power bookshelf speakers and a sub that's an easy path to a 5.1 and then ultimately atmos if you get an av receiver so um it's important for people to think that way and and Imaging from a you know true stereo system is pretty immersive. It, it gives you a nice sort of uh, you know pulling sounds from different areas in space that even some of the virtual soundbar um, you know technology they have doesn't do as good a job of. Yeah, no, definitely, and that that is where I've been. I would point people to a a two channel setup with a subwoofer over a soundbar most times when they ask. I think it's just going to give you a better experience. I you know every, virtual surround. I mean, 
they sell TVs that say they have virtual surround too coming out of the TV speakers. And it's like, yeah, but it's a, the, the speakers run by a hamster somewhere in the back of the TV. <laughs> like it's not, there's no power behind it. So what's yeah, the, the point size of a quarter? Yeah, exactly. So and, that, no, I think that'll be cool to, to have that as an option, not, oh, well, it already is an option, but to uh, keep advancing that line. Cause I do think it's, you know, we're trying to maximize space here in all of our houses. So anywhere you can eliminate a few wires in the living room helps. Um, but you did bring up Atmos and I do want to talk Atmos because I, I jumped into Atmos probably three or four years ago. And I jumped in with the, with the prime elevation speakers from, from you guys. Um, and they're, I try to explain this and I'm not probably the best at it at exactly why they're different, but just the way that they, you know, they're, they're ceiling mounted or, or mounted up high. They shoot the sound down at you versus using the ceiling bounce, which a lot of other speakers use. Like if you could explain that to people so that I'm not the idiot who's trying to get it across to them all the time, like why these speakers are so good. Cause I preach all the time. People ask Atmos, I say, get these, like these are going to work better than a lot of the, you know, maybe cheaper options out there, but they're not going to give you the experience that you're hoping for. Um, so if you could just like talk about where that idea came from, how that technology developed, that'd be awesome. Yeah. So I'll, I'll kind of go through the path, I guess, as uh, the way most people would do Atmos. So there's, there's really three ways to get Atmos in your home. There's an in ceiling speaker, which mm-hmm. you know, you've got to deal with insulation, cutting into your walls and place right. who can sometimes not be ideal because they'll either be way far in front of you or way far behind you. And they essentially just shoot straight down. Even if you have a, there's my dogs. Sorry. So uh, even if you have a directional tweeter, it's still essentially going down. It, there's not a ton of direct uh, directionality going right at you. Hmm. Uh, the other option is putting a speaker on top of your front or rear speakers and do what's called a topper. And it's an angled speaker that projects the sound upward to your ceiling and is to emulate something happening up above you. And if, if you have a perfectly square room with a flat ceiling, no texture on it, uh, no ceiling fan, it, it may kind of work if you're in a smaller room. But if you tend to have ceilings that are over eight feet tall or have a ceiling fan like I do in here, it, it's not typically the best option. And when you look at both of those solutions, they're also typically frequency limited, meaning they're not going to do a whole lot of the big over the top action sounds. Mm. So you'll get the, the high pitched sounds, the kind of whizzing sounds by you from a jet or a bullet, and maybe rain and a little bit of thunder, but you won't get a whole lot of definition. And so we looked at that. And then if you kind of approach what it looks like when you walk into a movie theater, when you walk into a movie theater, the speakers are not built into the wall. They are not built into the ceiling. They are on the wall. They are aimed at the listening position. And that's exactly what the prime elevation is. It is a direct radiating speaker, meaning it is aimed at you. And I'll do a little camera pan right here. So there's mine right up there on the wall uh, here in my listening room. And uh, it's like a five minute install. You get the wire where it's going to go and this mount goes on the wall. There's four screws that go into a wall. Just get two of them into a stud. And then on the back of the speaker, there's uh, the other part of the mount that has pegs on it and it just rests inside the mount. And you can put it as your front speakers, your height effect speakers, a ceiling mounted speaker, a rear surround, put it on its side. And because it's not frequency limited, you can cross it down to about 80 hertz. I typically run mine at 90. So you'll get more of that experience and you also get this fill in where it will meet your front stage and your rear stage because of the way it's designed so you don't have a gap uh, if you remember listening to 51 back in the day something might go from the front to the back and then try to pan from left to right and it just didn't work and now mm-hmm. that's completely been taken care of with multi channel and now with atmos so you get that object based surround sound where if you're listening to a movie or watching a movie like Ready Player One, the big race at the very beginning, you're going to hear all the cars, you're going to get all the energy, you're going to get the T-Rex roar through the entire room and up above you. And then when King Kong chases you down, you have his breath coming from the back, up above you, and in the front stage, which is super cool. Yeah, no, I was actually just watching, uh, I watched Moonfall the other day for a 4K review. And if you haven't, if you haven't demoed that one yet, that's a, uh, that's a pretty wild Atmos track. Yeah, I need to check it out. I've, I've heard uh, 
some really interesting <laughs> reviews about the movie itself. But uh, I know that the, is a different story. <laughs> yeah, the awful movies always have great sound. So. Yeah, well, I mean, this, I mean, Roland Emmerich, he knows how to do, yep. you know, sound. You can pick any of his movies and probably demo, <laughs> but um, yeah, Moonfall was a super impressive one to put on the list um, for sure. But um, I mean, you're totally right. The flexibility. I think of those, those elevation speakers is also really nice because if you do in ceiling installation, you're, you're sort of limiting yourself how you can lay out your room too. Like you need to be under those speakers or it doesn't make sense. So, okay, you, you cannot move your room or you need to reinstall everything in the ceiling and who wants to deal with that versus you. I mean, you're totally right. I got a, I got a bigger TV than what I had. And it cut into where I had the elevations on the wall. So I had to move them. I mean, five minutes, take them out, move the bracket. Yeah. You can mount the elevations. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's easier than mounting a TV for sure. It's it's super simple. So that was, that was the thing that stood out to me and why I recommend them to people because it doesn't take a rocket scientist to put them together and you don't have to cut your house open. um, And you get a better experience than those sort of top shooting ceiling bounce uh, speakers. I don't know anybody that has a perfectly square room without any imperfections. So, you know, I, I never right. think you're going to, you know, you're not going to get the best experience. Um, but the other thing that comes up a lot is, is subwoofers, the importance of subwoofers. How many do you need? How many do you really need? How many should you have? How big should it be? Does it matter? What's the power behind it? Can I go without one if I have just a, you know, a sound bar or a 2.0 system? Um, and you guys are, are probably as well known for your subwoofers as your speakers. Um, so if you could just talk like the importance of a subwoofer in a home theater setup and sort of everyone knows, oh, okay, it does the bass, but like, what is it, what is it really doing for you as a viewer? And why is it so important to have a solid subwoofer in your system? Larry, let me start. Cause I get really yeah. excited talking about subwoofers and then I'll let you <laughs> get into a little bit more of the uh, technical side of things. I mean, really when it comes to subwoofers, it's about, you know, feeling the action. It's about, you know, not just that sort of in your face, like people know bass when it's coming by in a car and it's like a do, 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 sort of this sloppy, boomy. That's not what you're talking about when you're, you're dealing with cinematic bass. You're talking about nuance. You're talking about crisp accuracy and it's not always loud. Sometimes the most subtle bass effects in a movie like A Quiet Place or like Bird Box, something like that, where it just sort of rumbles you. And it's the scene that draws you in. It creates some sort of ominous, you know, sense of danger that's impending or something like that. Or it's, you know, in your face action movie explosions. Like to me, that is what bass adds to the equation, not to mention, you know, soundtracks and music and giving them more feeling. But it's just an overall sense of, of place and being enveloped in sound where, you know, high frequencies in mid range just can't do it. You don't feel those. You, you hear them, you perceive them, but. Bass is something you feel and it's when it's done right, it just draws you in in a way that no other, you know, part of the, uh, the soundstage can really do. So that, that is why I love, you know, having multiple subwoofers in my home theater setup. But, uh, but Larry can talk a little bit more about, you know, technically what you should consider and, and some, some of the other important areas to, to think about. Yeah. And I'll tell you right off the bat, room size typically doesn't come into the equation as much as most people think it does. I, it can really be placement can take care of room size. It can be going multiples can take care of room size or mm-hmm. doing a ported subwoofer versus a sealed. And I think that's where the conversation typically needs to go is what you're going to use it for. Uh, do you have the ability to do multiples and do you have flexibility in where you can place it? If you've really only got one spot where a subwoofer can go, then that can limit you. But, you know, a a subwoofer really is meant to bring the whole system together. It is to put you in that experience. Like Nick was saying, if if it's just mids and highs, you're just listening to the horns when you're watching Jaws. You're not feeling the the dread coming at you. And so placement is key. If you've got a sealed subwoofer, a corner typically benefits you there because it will use that corner to add more output or what's called room gain. If you have a big open concept living room, a ported subwoofer would benefit you because it's going to take on that space with more energy. It will play louder. It will go deeper. And you'll have a little bit of flexibility in regards to how loud and how deep you want it to go as well. And placement's not typically as key with a ported sub, but it can make a difference. Uh, if you can do multiples, kind of getting them, I don't know, perpendicular or opposite of each other, 
will eliminate a sweet spot. So in, in my listening room in here, I have one single subwoofer for the home theater and it's in this back corner over here and it's corner loaded. It's a SB 2000 pro and it, this room isn't very big. It's like a 13 by 13 bedroom, but downstairs in my living room, it's open to my kitchen and dining and kind of a breakfast area. So it might be something like 65, 75 feet long, however long it is. And I've got a cylinder subwoofer in that room. And I did that because I couldn't fit one of our larger, larger ported subwoofers without eliminating some furniture that my wife likes. So my, <laughs> my room is awful. Uh, the TV sits in a corner and where I previously had a sealed subwoofer sitting back in that corner, I now have a larger cylinder sub. And so our ported subs and cylinder subs are essentially identical in what they output, but the cylindrical subs, instead of being two feet or three feet deep, they're the same diameter, like 16 inches of a tower speaker and can go three feet or four feet tall instead. So I've got mine back in a corner. You don't see it, but you absolutely feel it when it kicks in. So really when looking at what a subwoofer can do, it, it can bring together all of your speakers and create that low frequency that a speaker simply can't uh, give you that depth and energy. Like Nick was saying in the, uh, the kind of the moment when you really expect it or maybe don't. And it's what you remember when you go to a concert or a movie too. So if you bring that home, it's, it's really cool. And we've got a tool that you can use on our website that helps people figure that out. Like I said, it's not necessarily about the room. It's typically about what speakers you're using on your front <laughs> stage. So if you go to svsound.com and go all the way to the bottom, you'll see an icon for the matching tool. And when you click on that, it's essentially a tool to help you frequency match a subwoofer to your speakers. So depending on what speakers you have or maybe you're looking at to purchase, uh, you plug in a brand and a model, and based on the speaker itself, it says, okay, based on the speaker, here's the subwoofer we recommend. And it, it really doesn't have anything to do with your room. It's about those speakers. Mm -hmm. And it's, it also gives you settings for home theater base versus two-channel base because they're very different. On one, you're using a crossover inside the receiver. On the other, you're using a crossover inside the sub. And it walks you through all that too. So uh, you know, depending on your room, we can help you with that. And then you can reach out to our sound experts team to go, well, maybe two smaller ones would benefit you versus one larger one. Then, yeah. If, if I can add to that, um, you know, I, I think Larry, Larry did a good job framing up sort of what, uh, what you should consider. And, you know, I, I think people do emphasize room size, I think a little too much in, in terms of making that decision. Sealed and ported is obviously a big decision, but it's, it's a large component. You know, it's usually one of the largest in your system. So uh, that becomes an uh, something to consider. And the other part of it is, you know, there's, there's really five things you should listen for when choosing a subwoofer. And this is kind of what makes SVS subwoofers special is that we do all five of these things really well. And there may be others that do one or two things equally well or better, but it's about these five things that really make it a, a great subwoofer. So if you, you hear these things, then it will actually uh, be the best subwoofer for you. And, and I'll quickly run through them. Accuracy and frequency response. You want it to produce real sound. You want it to produce the right amount of sound without sounding sort of boomy and bloated. Um, it's got to go as low as you possibly want it to, which is 20 hertz is sort of that magical frequency where you start feeling the bass. Anything below 20 hertz is is sort of that guttural, visceral experience that you get from, uh, you know, movie cinema. And it, it's really what defines a, a phenomenal subwoofer. And uh, all SVS subwoofers hit below 20 hertz at this point, except for our micro, and it's pretty darn close. And then output, it's got to be able to play as loud as you want it. I mean, that's part of what this is. So if your system's turned up, it should rise to the level of uh, your speakers and, and never fall short. Uh, it's got to blend seamlessly with your speakers. So as much as it's got to play as loud as them, it also has to make it sound like it's producing bass for all of your speakers, whether you have five, seven, 12, like it is filling in those lowest octaves for every speaker in your system. And finally is transient response. And this is one of my, uh, sort of dark horse, like most important factors. It's got to be able to stop and start on a dime, like really keep up with the musical uh, bass notes that are playing, but also like this, you know, the, the stomping of a break on a, on a car race or a gunshot. It's got to be able to have that snappiness without overhang or bloat. So if you find a subwoofer that can do all those things well, it's a great sub. Yeah, no, those are good points because I, I do think people – uh, maybe not if you're an expert in this stuff and you've been doing it for a while, but people that are asking me who are looking to start a home theater setup, they're always so concerned about the speakers and they kind of, yeah, yeah, and I'll get a sub. And I'm like, no, but wait, like if you're going to do this right, 
Like let's maybe almost start there, like, <laughs> and build that into the equation because that really matters. Um, and you, you can definitely, I've had some cheap ones and I've had some home theater in a box experiences and I've had the little subwoofers that come with the sound bars sometimes. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's all tinny and it sounds, it sounds terrible. I mean, you can tell the, you can absolutely tell the difference. You get a quality sub. So it's generally not the place you want to skimp. If you're going to skimp right. somewhere in your home theater, cables, like there's plenty of areas to right. find savings. Like don't get a knock, like a, a lesser grade sub that's just going to bring the entire soundstage down. You know, make, make sure you, you invest in it. Yeah. I mean, even I, I would say even your TV, your panel, like what's, you know, is there a between a thousand dollar and a fifteen hundred dollar TV? Is there going to be a massive difference for a lot of people? Like probably not. Maybe between a three thousand and a thousand dollar TV, but maybe take that 500 bucks and use it on the subwoofer instead and get the cheaper TV. Like it, it, the sound is so important. And that's why a lot of people focus on how do these 4k discs that I review look, but at the same time, like if you're not getting a real home theater experience, what's the point of upgrading to the format and getting 4k. So it's, it's an equally important part of the equation. Um, I did want to ask you one thing about subs and bass. I've, I, I don't know if this is a rumor. I don't know if this is true. I have heard that there are horror movies where they just, they put in bass that is so low that you can't actually hear it as a human, but you can just feel it. And it's supposed to make you feel terror and you don't even know what's happening because you can't hear it. Is that like Hollywood rumor or is that something that actually happens in movies? I, I would assume that it's probably out there. I mean, there are a lot of the demos we like to do use what's referred as like subsonic or infrasonic bass, which is the stuff you, you simply feel. And horror movies are great at that. You know, like Annabelle creation kind of comes to mind. There's uh, the entity that's in the movie. Anytime it is present, there's bass. Uh, so there, there's a lot of that. Um, but really, I, I think horror movies are the best format for surround sound when people don't think it. obviously action movies are more enjoyable for more people but a great horror movie with surround yeah it, it will scare your pants off and uh, i think that's what's really awesome or a video game even for that matter yeah and yeah those low frequency sound waves when they get long enough like they will raise the hair on the back of your neck like you will not hear anything you'll just feel this tingling or this compression in your chest because ultimately it's just moving air i mean that's what the subwoofer is doing but it's doing it in amounts that you are only feeling and you're not even perceiving with uh you know with your ears so uh i definitely believe it i wish i could pull one out of my hat right now and tell you yes this scene but i think annabelle creation actually has uh, a little bit of that effect in that that certain scene we've demoed you know under the floorboards and whatnot so something to check out no i i, I love that because i tell people that and they're like dude you're in, you're insane like nobody's <laughs> you, you can't just make me feel terror but like you, i mean there are certain frequencies that will literally make the hair in your neck stand up and it's the like problem that. is there's, there's only a handful of subwoofers out there that can reproduce those frequencies so right. you know the people who are mastering this this film score you know whatever going into the final stages um you know they may be the only ones who ever know about it unless you have somebody with a you know pb16 ultra one of our, our big subs so um certainly it's a it's an easter egg i'd love to discover yeah no but i think i think you're you're so right when it comes to what people look for in demo discs for, for audio, there are the big action movies. There's the big, you know, the fast and the furious types that are going to blow you away and the speakers are pumping the whole time. But there are like those, you brought up a quiet place. Like there's these really nice, subtle moments in a quieter, slower movie like that, that are more impactful maybe than anything, you know, fast nine is just throwing at you for two hours and you really feel that moment. And um, I would love to hear like other, like what else are, are demo discs that you guys use? Cause I, you know, everyone goes to, I go to Godzilla versus Kong. I go to, you know, these big massive scale movies with, you know, lots of overhead and lots of moving parts, but I'm curious what you guys use for demos. Cause you already mentioned Annabelle creation and I would have never guessed that that was a demo disc, um, for a, for a yeah, speaker company. Fun. Larry, I'll let you talk, but let me throw my one dark horse out there because I always get to bring this one up. One of my favorites, it just comes out of nowhere and it scared the crap out of my kid. So I've just found that so humorous. It was Polar Express 
the first time that train pulls up outside the kid's house, it was like shaking our windows. And he was like, <laughs> he thought it was an earthquake. And it was just awesome because it comes out of nowhere. And there's really not that much bass like that throughout the movie. So it just totally sneaks up on you. Uh, but that's one of my favorites. But but Larry could spend the next hour, you know, sharing his. So uh, <laughs> dive in. We. I travel with about 90 discs for whenever we do our trade shows. And I know a demo on every single one of them, you know, and uh, a couple of our favorites, uh, mission impossible rogue nation. There's uh, yep. a sequence where Tom Cruise and Simon Pegg are in a BMW going through a small kind of uh, like European town and there's alleyways and you kind of get the echoing of the alley, but it's chasing, they're chasing down six or seven motorcycles and there's gunshots and I think my favorite aspect of the sequence is you change perspective, whether you're in the car with them or you're along with one of the motorcycles. And if you happen to have uh, height effects, you actually hear that change in the audio. And there's just a lot of energy from the car, the motorcycles. There's a couple of collisions. And uh, it's, it's actually a really funny sequence, too. So that's one we play quite a bit at our events. Uh, the Ready Player One sequence at the beginning, we already kind of talked about. Um, yeah. I think uh, Spider-Man Far From Home, there's a sequence kind of right in the middle of the movie where Mysterio and Spider-Man get into it for the first time, and Mysterio is using the projection system, sorry, spoiler, uh, to <laughs> kind of create this area around Spider-Man. So it's not the new one, it's the last one. And uh, you hear his voice kind of coming from everywhere. And if you have yep. a really effective height effects system you don't hear it coming from the speaker you hear it coming from the middle of the room or behind you or in front of you and so we do that one a lot uh the greatest showman you wouldn't think of as being a demo but we love showcasing the the swedish nightingale scene uh it's the emotional turning point of the movie it's just her sitting uh, on stage singing and so if you've watched the movie there's mm -hmm. this emotion to it but it's really there to showcase your front stage but primarily your center channel and you get a lot of uh, you get her taking her breath between notes. There's whispering. There's just flat out just belting out the tunes. And then the front stage is uh, very energetic from the orchestra and the subwoofer kind of accompanies it. And then the background is just the reflections from the auditorium. Uh, my favorite that everyone, well, not everyone hates, but Gary, our CEO, hates with a passion is the Ninja <laughs> Turtles movie from 2014. It's probably the stupidest okay. bass demo you'll ever do. Uh, <laughs> sequence where uh, it's chapter 16. I know this well. Uh, they're going down uh, a snowy hill in an out of control 18 wheeler. And there's Humvees and snowmobiles and electric rail guns and swords and just all this craziness. But we... I, I do it. I'm the only one in the company that does it. Uh, everyone <laughs> hates it. But it's got these two base sweeps, one of which is just a few seconds. But there's this point where Donatello flips a Hummer. And when he does, there's this, I don't know, 10, 12 second base drop that just goes lower uh, as it goes from beginning to end. And it will pressurize and knock stuff down in a room. And we did it at Expona this past week in Chicago. And was, I think we almost made some woman sick. She was like yeah. walking out like, cause it was like, so like hitting yeah. her in the chest. She was like, Oh, I just ate. That was pretty funny. One of the other ones I love is a uh, baby driver. Just the opening car chase scene. I mentioned mm -hmm. transient response earlier. Um, there's a lot going on in that scene where, you know, you could sort of lose some of the effects, but um, when they're shifting gears or when he's stomping on the brake or that opening gunshot, there's just a lot to really show the crisp sort of, clean base that uh that is really challenging for a lot of subwoofers to pull off especially when there's that much other uh sonic action going on around you um but i love that opening sequence to show off transient response and i'll you know i'll often call that out um but there's a ton i mean we could keep going i, I yeah, think the Jurassic fun. parts are always fun uh i like those more than larry but uh he's more in the mission impossible camp i think we've had uh tron tron's like one of our original yeah. demos the legacy uh the light cycle battle scene i mean that's one mm -hmm. of the and then you know i think everyone knows about um edge of tomorrow sort of that opening scene from that it's that's more of a torture test track and we have a few of those that are almost painful to listen to um what was the the oil rig movie that we're not a not we don't like yeah, horizon horizon we don't let you play that one anymore because it's like just it, that it, one's it's insane. almost painful yeah all right yeah that one was insane i remember listening to that one even just here and it was yeah that one i, I think i had to turn down um it was crazy <laughs> But yeah, I, I guess that one and they're like, never, never again. <laughs> so we've, 
we've just kind of moved that one out. I still travel with it in case somebody requests it. And then we do concerts too, like Hans Zimmer live in Prague. It's uh, like it's a good one. Thing to listen to. Uh, yeah. Rob Nine from, uh, <laughs> I, I want to say they did it in Spain or, Prague. or I think it was, Prague. yeah. Yeah. So, uh, that one's killer. You just got to watch who you play it for. Hmm. <laughs> right. Uh, so if you had to pick, like, I guess if you each had to pick one, one movie, top to bottom, like what's your, if you had to sit somebody down for two hours and say, here's, here's why you need a home theater, you know, the full, the full gamut of the movie, what's the best sort of audio experience that you've, you've had. I mean, I'm going to go with my favorite movie of all time because I feel like it has it all. It has a phenomenal soundtrack. It's got some action sequences. It's got some sort of subtle, sort of calmer bass. Um, but it's not like a prototypical action, uh, prototypical action movie. And it's uh, Jacob's Ladder with uh, okay. Tim Robbins. It's an older movie. But like I said, it's got war scenes. It's got sort of thriller and horror elements. And it's got um, just a phenomenal soundtrack. So to me, uh, that's just my personal taste. I don't think most people would love the movie because it's really weird and kind of dark. Um, but I liked it for me personally, I just found it to be a, you know, a perfect demo because of, of just how many of those elements it, it checked the box on. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. So that's a tough question, but, uh, I think, uh, the concert disc from Hans Zimmer is, is one that I would absolutely put somebody in front of. And then, uh, cinematically, who, um, I think something newer would probably be the new ghostbusters afterlife. Good. Okay. It, from beginning to end, there's music, there's a ton of fun sequences that kind of harken back to the original and really recreate those sound effects that we all grew up with, but better and kind of over the top. And there's this five or six sequences that uh, really kind of open things up and maybe the new Batman movie too, but I'm waiting on that for disc. I'm not going to watch it at home until the disc comes out. Because so, you're right. you're you're a man after my own heart. There, I I could watch. I would love to watch it again on HBO Max. I saw it in the theater on opening night, and it was yeah. incredible. But I'm kind of like, you know what? I'll I'll wait because I just want that. I want that disc. I think that's going to be a killer one. Oh, yeah. um, I we cannot wait. Mobile scene for sure. Yeah, that's going to be awesome when it comes. To the, well, hopefully, it's awesome when it comes to the disc. They don't screw it up. <laughs> I don't think they will. Yeah, um, doesn't let me down. Yeah, they do a pretty good job, but that uh, this interesting. Uh, the Hans Zimmer one is one that people keep telling me I need to get. I've heard it. I've just like watched parts of it online, and I don't have the disc. And people keep telling me. I, I've had a few viewers say, "Hey, have you ever heard this?" Because it's like life changing, incredible, and it I is, love his phenomenal. music. So, yeah. and if you're a movie junkie, which you are, it's his entire gamut from Driving Miss Daisy all the way to the Christopher Nolan movies. Huh. It's on Netflix. It's just only in five one on Netflix. Yeah, yeah, see, we don't we don't do that in this house. If we're if we're gonna listen to it, we're getting the disc. I'll watch. I watch Netflix, of course. But like, if I'm gonna do Hans Zimmer in concert, we're gonna get the disc and set it up on the the five. Get all the speakers going. Get the sub going. Um, and Ghostbusters Afterlife, I actually haven't watched yet. So oh, it's, um, it's fun. We've been it's in my backlog that quite a bit. Yeah, it's got a great opening sequence too that we demoed. But um, the what's funny is with the Hans Zimmer disc when we were doing in person events. And we'd broadcast from the event we were doing in the store. We'd showcase some of the Hans Zimmer as part of our main demo. And you could watch the price over the two days, three days after our broadcast spike, two, three, four, five dollars, and then come back down. And then a few weeks later, we'd do our event again and you'd see the price go back up. So I I always kind of got a kick out of that. So you're saying Hans Zimmer owes, owes you royalties? Is that what you're saying? I don't know, man. We we do play him. Uh, Sounds like bit, it. So I think it's an even trade. <laughs> yeah, at least some sort of commission or something. Maybe, you know, I looked at buying it once and I was like, this seems kind of expensive. So maybe I have you guys to blame and I should go look again. Um, it, it I want to say it was like 25 too. bucks. Yeah, it was... buy it at 25. Yeah. Okay, it, all right. Yeah. Good to know. I was waiting for it. I was like, this got to dip at some point, right? It really hasn't though. Um, I'll definitely be picking that one up. But interesting. There's some scenes out there for all you guys listening and watching to to try out. Um, these guys know it best and I just can't, some of these scenes sound incredible here. I can't imagine what they're like in a, uh, uh, what do you, a trade show booth with, you know, in a very enclosed space. I can imagine <laughs> there are some people who are just like leaving with stomach problems. And <laughs> I mean, yeah, I play stupid loud. 
Yeah, no, I, I mean, I love that, but definitely there's people who can't. My dad got sick the other day at a concert from too much bass. I was like, oh, you're, get, you're getting old, buddy. Um, <laughs> that's not a good sign. <laughs> you do try to find the balance, but we, we tend to be the guilty pleasure at audio shows. Like, you know, you're, you're going into these rooms where like they expect complete silence because they want you to be able to like hear the voice of God and they're playing at sort of moderate levels and they're playing like, you know, Diana Crawl or like some sort of folk music and you're like, oh, this is nice. Then you come into our room and they're playing Ninja Turtles and Rammstein and Mission Impossible. And it's like, I mean, this is who we are. So, you know, it sounds like more fun, but then we also do two channel. We'll, we'll turn on some opera and be like, we can play both games, but we just want to have more fun and give you guys a little bit more excitement than what you're getting in some of the other rooms. So I think it's sort of part and parcel to uh, just who we are as a brand as well is, is sort of doing things a little bit differently than our, than our industry. Yeah, I can, I can appreciate that. I definitely, I definitely feel that. So um, I think that's why I sort of gravitated towards you guys as my uh, the provider for the official films at home, home theater setup. <laughs> but it's been great. I mean, I've had the same people always ask me like, hey, are these going to last? And I'm like, guys, I've had the same speakers for six, seven years. There's not much technology that I've owned this long, especially in this time where like you can't buy an appliance for more than three years before it breaks down. Like they're solid. They still, they look like I got them yesterday. They sound like I got them yesterday. Like they are really, really solid. And so, you know, people come and say, oh, well, they're a little bit more expensive than brand XYZ on Amazon. And I'm like, yeah, but who is brand XYZ on Amazon? Some, some warehouse in the middle of nowhere, just shipping out stuff off the back of a truck. Like, you know, go for it if you want to save the money, but I think it's worth the investment. Um, I think that it's, it's an important part of the setup. You know, people drop four or five grand on their displays and then spend 500 bucks on, on speakers. And I, I think we could, we can meet in the middle somewhere on those two. It's, it's worth the investment. Yeah, you're, you're totally right. It's, it's not disposable technology. When you buy a pair or, you know, a system with high performance speakers, um, they're built to last. I mean, you've said five years, we've got owners who have had them for 12 to 15 years and they're still going strong. And, you know, I don't think that value always comes across to, to people um, because, you know, they just think of every piece of technology as disposable. But, um, you know, it's definitely something that you're going to enjoy every day. And so to to really skimp on that, at, you know, to at the expense of, of just saving a few bucks doesn't doesn't make sense when you're when you are engaging with it every day, in my opinion. Yeah, no, and, and I, I fully expect these to go. You know, they've been they've been through two moves. They've been in three different rooms. I mean, they've gone through the gauntlet and they're still kicking it. And, you know, like you say, if you get good speakers, I, my, my dad still has his two stereo speakers from when he was like 18. And I mean, they sound great because they're these nice old quality speakers. I don't remember who made them, but, they're you know, he, he has them forever. He's, he spent a ton of money on them. But, you know, that's what I expect from these ones, too, is you know, 10, 15 years from now. And uh, the beauty is. I can adapt with the technology because you guys are staying on top of it. So when I need it at most, you have the elevation speakers for me and, you know, whatever, whatever comes next, um, I'm sure you guys will be on top of it. So I've been a very happy, very happy customer. So I think everyone should, should check you out. And, you know, I think that's what makes you sort of different from the competitors out there is just the, the quality, there's support b behind it. There's guys, you know, who you can actually talk to and, get help setting up and yep. using your online tools like that all plays into it. And I, I do value that. Yeah. We actually added something new. Uh, it sort of came out of the pandemic, but it's, it's become a permanent fixture. We actually do like video sessions now where essentially you cool. turn your camera into your room. We'll help you choose the best products based on, you know, the layout or dimensions awesome. or, you know, certain architectural features, um, you know, sharing with us what your listening preferences are and then showing us your room really puts the full puzzle together and it allows our team to make the best recommendation. It's not just for audio. It's also about TV placement. It's about home theater setup in general. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, just go on our site and reach out to our team and, and set up an appointment. Uh, and it's something that, again, just takes that to the next level because I think a lot of people are intimidated. You know, it's like, Going from a sound bar to a 5.1 can sound kind of scary. All right, I got to run wires. I'm not an electrician. It's not really that big of a deal. But helping people get past that sort of intimidation factor and then setting them on that path to really understanding the uh, the value of great sound and then the fact that it isn't that complicated um, is an important thing that I think a lot of people haven't quite done the math on yet, yet are, uh, are getting more into it as we see you know more physical media getting out there and, and just bigger investments by blockbuster movies in, in terms of audio and uh, people just paying more attention in general. 
Yeah, no, and I think I think during the pandemic too. I know my channel and all my content saw a big bump, and I think there was this, you know, there there was a change from okay, I can't go to the movie theater. I'm getting these, you know, day and date releases from HBO Max, and you know, I'm going to invest in in my home theater and everything that's come out on streaming, but also physical media and how quickly that comes out now after theatrical releases. And like, I got an eight month old baby. Like, I'm not getting out to movie theaters. Like, I. I Batman was it. Like I'll go to the big ones, but I won't make it to Doctor Strange this weekend. Like it's just, it's just not going to happen. I don't make it to everything. Um, so you know those investments you can make at home, and as movie theaters get so expensive, and I think people just saw the value because I saw a big uptick in activity over the last couple of years, which was really interesting. That you know it turned what was a pretty big negative into somewhat of a positive for the people in this community um as much positive as we can take out of that so that was that was good to see people investing and and getting more into home theater i definitely felt that yeah we had to change the way we got our experiences like i yeah when i travel i was traveling you know a couple hundred days a year and i'd go to a movie at night because i i love the theatrical experience or we go to a concert in right. over the last two plus years, we really haven't been able to do that. And people realized that how much we missed all that. So we saw home theaters coming into play, two channel coming into play. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe, you know, you decide, hey, let's go ahead and upgrade that home theater that's in the living room or take that extra room that's just kind of collecting stuff like this and make it into something a little different. And when you do that, you take that experience that you love outside the home and bring it in the home. And exactly said, you know, I, I'm going to a concert, my first concert in a very long time in June. And yeah, it's me too. very expensive and it's yeah. a small show. And if you go to the movie, I've got a family of five. If we go to the movie, I will only go to Dolby Cinema. And mm-hmm. you know, if you look at that, that's $20 a ticket early in the day. And now right. they've got that weird velocity pricing based on when the movie came out. So uh, we just watch it at home. And it's, uh, it's, it, it's what a lot of us have done. Yeah, no, I, de- I definitely felt that. And I, I feel the same way. I'm like, geez, it's, it's 50 bucks to go to a movie now, 60 bucks, even just for me and my wife at the time, you put, you pull kids into the equation. It's yeah. like, now we're talking a hundred bucks to go out. Um, I mean, just do that 10 times and you can turn that into an investment into something nice for your home. Um, so that's, that's definitely where I've been pushing people and where I've seen more interest, which is, which is kind of neat because they, they've, a lot of people have been reaching out and I think Nick, you made a good point too. Like you definitely don't have to be an electrician or some rocket scientist to put this in. Cause that is what scared me at first was I went from home theater in a box that was running off of a Blu-ray player. Like that was, that was all I could get when I was 19. And I was like, I want five speakers. Let's do this. And I was terrified of hooking up a receiver and the, just trying to deal with getting the wires in running the wire. And you know what? It's not that bad. Like yeah. I'm by no means an electrician. And now I'm like, I've installed things at other people's houses. Cause I've just gotten so comfortable with it from playing with it and moving a couple times. It's really not that bad. And I also, I keep saying home theater too. I think it is important to emphasize, like get a two channel. If, if that's what you can do, that's better than a sound bar. And you don't always have to have five channels to get, you know, you can build to that and that's the beauty of it. So I just, I hope, I hope people take all the advice and do that. I know sound bars are popular, but man, I'd rather have two great channels up front than, than a sound bar any day. And that you can change out easier too. Exactly. And I've been through three sound bars in my living room in the same amount of time I've had these speakers. So it goes to, there's a quality for you too. They, they blow out, they die, they, things go haywire. It's just, <laughs> I, I stopped believing in them. <laughs> so they're useful if you can't hear the dialogue from your TV speakers and that's really all you care about. But if you're into movies, you're into cinema, you, you know, want to feel immersed in even sports and things like that. Like yeah. a soundbar is never going to do it for you. It's just yeah. always going to leave something to be desired. No, I don't. And I watch movies in the living room in the sound bar. That is the primary reason we got it. So we could hear the dialogue better when the baby's sleeping or something. We don't mm-hmm. have to turn the TV up on the wall, but God, you, you put a disc in that's trying to push a 5.1 over a soundbar. I, I have to hit the volume adjustment every every 30 yep. seconds because it, it'll blow you away one scene, and the next scene you can't hear anybody. And it's, it's the most annoying thing in the world. So I have uh, I officially decided this week we're going to the back to the two-channel. My wife's going to have to deal with 
maybe some wires or maybe I go wireless, which I think uh, might be the play here. Uh, just to can't make the wife upset with all the wires. It's her living room. I'm just living in it. Yeah. It, it's, it's funny too. I mean, that, that is a very, um, a theme we deal with all the time is sort of like, how do I get my significant other to embrace this? And, you know, yeah. there's no golden ticket, but ultimately if you can find a way to engage them with the content that they enjoy and really perceive the value of being immersed and, you know, feeling more emotion because the audio and, and the soundtrack is really being conveyed in a more artistic or more visceral way, then that's, that, that is sort of the ticket. And then things like hiding wires under conduits or, you know, burying them in the walls or having a couple extra boxes in the room, it doesn't become an eyesore. It becomes a, an ends to a mean of enjoying the content just with that much more, you know, just together and, and just getting more out of it because like there is so much great stuff out there now um, that it just gets it on a deeper level for you to, to be able to enjoy it. Yeah. Well, and the beauty is you guys don't make ugly speakers. So that's also helpful. <laughs> you get the nice, I've got the, uh, I've got the piano, the, the glossy black, which is still looks great. You'd think with two dogs and everything going on and moves, it would be like scratched to shit, but it's actually pretty, <laughs> it's in great shape and it still looks awesome. So, um, and then I got the wood finish on the elevation, which is also great. So it helps when you don't make ugly speakers that look terrible in a room, which thankfully you guys don't do. Yeah. Um, so props to your design team out there as well. Um, but yeah, uh, before I let you guys go, just, you know, what, I guess what's coming to SVS, anything new, anything exciting people should know, you know, where should we be sending people here after they listen to this? Um, this is your, this is your marketing moment, Nick. All right. I better, I better <laughs> not miss this opportunity then. Uh, well, our, our website is svsound.com. Um, we do sell uh, two lines of speakers, our ultra and our prime series, uh, as well as what, like 23 subwoofers now. So there's a oh, subwoofer right. for everybody out there, up, you know, ones that are the size of a large dog house down to ones that are, you know, sort of the size of a shoe box. And so, you know, you really have to just sort of factor in what your needs are and, and we'll help walk you through that process. Um, but then we also do accessories. We have cables, we have uh, what's called our isolation system. We'd even talk about uh, disturbing the neighbors or cleaning up sort of base room rattle. Uh, but we have yeah. these great little isolation feet that you can add to a subwoofer. So if you do have people that are in an adjacent room or, uh, you know, a townhouse, things like that, it really sort of cleans up some of that rattling base that, uh, that can cause issues sometimes. Um, you know, I mentioned cables and then, uh, you know, as far as what's on the horizon, we have our new, uh, Prime Wireless Pro, which is coming out in the summertime. It's, uh, the second evolution of our wireless speakers. I won't spill too much on that, but it does add HDMI, which is one of the big ones. And it's got a lot of bells and whistles for music lovers as well. Uh, it's got a remote, a new interface. So we really, when we do a product launch, we don't just slap a new badge or a new finish on it and, uh, you know, sort of release it as, as version two. It's a complete overhaul from performance to looks to uh, across the board. So um, that's what our Prime Wireless Pro will be. Then we have a, an in-wall subwoofer coming out a little bit later in this year. And then some other secret things that I probably can't talk about. Um, <laughs> but we'll also be at some shows, Larry. Is that right? We're, we're going to be doing some live action uh, demos here in the near future as well. Yeah, and I just booked some of my travel today. So we're going to be at the show in Long Beach, California in June. It's the Home Entertainment, T-H-E. Yeah, the. T-H-E. And uh, then the end of August, we're going to be in Raleigh, North Carolina for a big event out there, too. And there'll be some details coming on that soon as well. And I there's so much more coming. My travel schedule is about to get crazy. So we're, uh, we're looking forward to that. Now, where can people find SVS if you're just, you know, are you guys in like the Magnolia Theater in a Best Buy or, um, you know, I know you're in a, a few of the local uh, home theater audio video places around around me as well. But is Best Buy probably the, the most mainstream place people could go in and listen to things if they wanted to? Yeah. So depending on where you're at, you have uh, a couple different kinds of Best Buy. You have the regular Best Buy store. Then you have a Best Buy that has uh, what you may have known as Magnolia Home Theater inside it and inside there we have uh, two of our subwoofers the sb2000 pro and the pb1000 pro and then if you can find the magnolia design centers they're typically in the, the larger uh, areas they have uh, not only the sb2000 pro but have the sb4000 sb16 so they have our flagship subwoofers and our satellites on display and the current generation of prime wireless pro but if you go to bestbuy.com or our website Every single product we make is available. So if you do happen to go into one of their stores, they can absolutely uh, get it for you. That way you can take care of like their financing or 
the rewards program and stuff like that too. Yeah. Also Crutchfield, Amazon, a lot of other e-commerce uh, and, and local uh, retailers as well. So uh, yeah. there's a dealer locator on our site if you do want to hear something in person, but you can also do Perfect. a 45 day in-home trial if, uh, if that's your speed. There you go. Yeah. And like you said, you guys are, you know, you're, you're super helpful with the support. I know I've sent people your way and they've come back and told me, Hey, that was awesome. Like I set my whole thing up with them and it's coming in a couple, you know, a days and it's, it's super easy. So even just going straight to you guys, you know, if you, if you need help, I know these guys will do it. And, um, I do want to plug those isolation feet real quick. Cause those are awesome. And you just, I should have brought them up, but people, they probably don't know what they are. These just these little rubber, like feet that you put, I'm oversimplifying this, I'm sure from an engineering standpoint, <laughs> but you stick them on the bottom of your subwoofer. I have them because I was in a condo with people next to me and below me when I moved the first time. And so I got these from you guys because I didn't want to get kicked out of the condo association. <laughs> so it, I mean, it works. It really works great. Like it was, I never got a complaint. I would ask my neighbors like, Hey, I watched saving private Ryan last night. Did you hear anything? Cause I'm really curious if you could hear it. And they were like, Oh no, you were fine. Didn't hear anything. So if you live in an apartment or a small space or something, even if you got roommates and you don't want to piss them off, check those out. Those are a, a really nice little item to add to your, to your subwoofers. Yeah. And they, they work with turntables and speakers too. So if you have other audio gear go. that needs to be, you know, free from vibrational energy, they they can help with that. But yeah, they're, they, you know, for as simple as they look, we had like, I think 24 prototypes before we found I'm the right sure. kind of rubber material and like the, the right sort of, a, like, it was quite a, a process to get there, but they, they work really well. And, you know, 50 bucks, it's, it's a pretty dramatic enhancement for yeah. uh, that price. No, for sure. So if you guys are in one of those situations, definitely check them out. But but yeah, you guys, I'll put all these links uh, in the description of the, the video. If you're watching the video, if you're listening along, um, they'll be in the, the episode description. I'll put the, the dealer locator, links to SVS website, um, all that good stuff so people can find you and uh, hopefully reach out and get some more home theaters built out there. Absolutely. We love it. We're here, we're here to help. Our, our service is uh, available seven days a week, chat, email, social, You know, reach out however you want to. We'll take care of you. Absolutely. Cool. Well, thank you guys. Um, really appreciated this. Good talks. I learned a lot still. I'm definitely not like the AV expert when it comes to the equipment. So I'm always learning and trying to figure out new things. And uh, this was super helpful for me. And I'm sure it was helpful for a lot of other people. So I appreciate you taking the time and coming on here. And even though we're only on episode five, you giving me the support early in the podcast is huge thumbs up to SVS for, for coming on and and give and giving the support there because we're just starting out but hopefully we'll have you guys back on at some point maybe we can talk about some new products over the summer or something absolutely we love what you're doing we love your passion for physical media we, we share that passion and uh you know anything we can do to support the uh the cause we'll always be down for awesome well i will uh i'll talk to you guys at some point i'm sure we're in touch but um thanks for coming on have a, have a good rest of your night and uh that's it for the interview. So I'll catch you guys on the other side. Thanks guys for coming on. All right, guys. So that's the interview with SVS sound. I hope you guys enjoyed this, learned a lot. If you want to learn more about SVS sound, I will put some links in the episode description, both on YouTube and on Spotify, Apple, wherever you're listening to your podcasts. If you check the episode description, there will be a link where you can go check them out. Like they said, they're really on the sort of higher end when it comes to pricing, but you pay for what you get right? You're going to get quality speakers that last a long time, and you're going to get that level of support that another speaker company may not be able to give you. You could literally talk to one of these guys or their colleagues as you build your home theater, and they will help you design it and build it for your room and your setup, which is invaluable, especially if you don't know a whole lot about what you're doing and you're starting fresh for the first time. So that's one of the reasons I gravitate towards them and one of the reasons I continue to promote them, because first off, I've had my speakers for a very long time and they're still sound and look like I got them on day one. They're incredibly resilient, high quality. They've been through several moves, really appreciate their stuff, but they're also super technical. And when I wanted to upgrade to Atmos, they were really helpful in helping me understand 
how I would do that, where to set up the speakers, subwoofer placement, things like that. So I can't recommend them enough. Go check them out. Links are in the description. And they're a, a huge supporter of physical media and what I'm doing and what others are doing. So that's an even an even better reason to support them and what they're doing. So appreciate you guys listening to this episode. If you want to hear more like this, make sure you're following along on your favorite podcast app or you're subscribed to our YouTube channel where I post the video versions of these podcasts. Also, make sure to follow us on social media. All the links are in the YouTube description, and you can find all those links in the episode description on podcast apps as well. Next week's episode will be a really good one. We're going to be talking to MVD Home Entertainment. We're going to talk to their director of home video sales, um, Eric Wilkinson. So he has been in the home video physical media game for a very long time. He works at MVD Entertainment, who has their own MVD Rewind Blu-ray label. They also do a lot of releases under their MVD Visual label. And they are the United States distributor for Arrow Video and Blue Underground and a few other companies. So he has a really great pedigree. He knows about this industry and he's also a huge collector himself. I think he has something like five or 6,000 movies across different formats. Massive collector, even bigger than I am. So really excited to talk to him and make sure you tune in next week for that episode. But that's about it. So thank you for listening slash watching wherever you are, whichever platform you're on. I really appreciate the support. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Stay safe, stay healthy out there, and I'll talk to you all soon. Coming soon. Be sure to subscribe to the Films at Home podcast using your favorite app so you don't miss another episode. And while you're there, don't forget to rate and review this podcast, which helps us out tremendously. You can also help support us by watching our short form content over on YouTube and TikTok by searching Films at Home. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at films underscore at underscore home. The intro and outro were created by Elon Osborne. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.